Hi, I thought I'd put my original video up on how to shorten jeans. It's one of the most common clothing alterations you will get um, and way back in the day when I first opened my clothing alteration shop I remember people used to come in and say I can't shorten my jeans because I've only got a domestic sewing machine. Well, that's all I had in the shops so I only had domestic sewing machines and but it was the method that I used to um, to create the jean hem so that it looked authentic um, and so that technique along with my jean genie is what this video is all about so I hope that you enjoy the video and um, if you do want the jean genie you do need to purchase the book Clothing Alteration Secrets Revealed and the Jean Genies on the inside cover, which you'll see. But there are other um, items around that do the same sort of thing, so it's up to you. But anyway, it, there are techniques here that um, might have you shortening your own jeans using your domestic sewing machine. Happy altering! The Jean Genie is an invention which is used to sew over the thick seams on jeans hems. It's on the inside cover of my book Clothing Alteration Secrets Revealed and to release it just fold it forwards and backwards at the perforation and that should be enough to release it from the cover. It needs to be folded at the cutout sections in the middle there's a little um, white dotted line which shows you where to fold it and you can see that I'm going through and I'm folding each section one at a time. Then come back and then fold in the opposite direction bringing those two sections together so that they line up. And then bring the last one up so that that lines up as well. The two comments I used to get all the time in my shops was I can't shorten my jeans using my domestic sewing machine and I've cut them the wrong length, they're too short so they'd rather get someone else do it. Well the Jean Genie solves that problem. It allows you to get the right length and include your hem allowance plus it allows you to sew over the thick seams. Determining what the right length is for jeans will always depend on the style of the jean, the leg, leg width and also the shoes that the person's going to wear. I do prefer to pin to dress shoes rather than to joggers um, because joggers are quite thick and they can distort the length. I place two pins on the outside leg seam and this is actually my reference point and then I place a pin on the inside leg seam to make sure that that doesn't fall down a person can get a good idea of what the uh, jeans look like and you'll notice that I actually fold the fabric under I don't fold it out when you fold it out it gives again it gives you a false sense of what the length is be sure that the person's got them sitting on the waist or hips where they want them because what before the pinning because what can happen is people after you've pinned they can give them a bit of a pull and then of course the length's wrong I talked before about my reference point being at the cross pins so this is where I actually measure the amount that's folded under and with the Jean Genie we just put the start of the Jean Genie on the fold and then you can see how much has been folded under by following along the ruler. You've got inches on one side and centimeters on the other. The next step is to record the amount folded under. In Imperial it's four and a half and in metric it's 11.5 and notice that I put an arrow at the front showing that it's going up that amount. So we'll then take the pins out and get ready to check that the legs are the same length by the manufacturer. Manufacturers make mistakes and on average one in 100 um, jeans or trousers is going to have one leg shorter than the other. Before you mark and cut place the band together at the very top and place the two outside seams together. You'll see how I've got the band together at the top and then run the two outside seams together 
down until you get to the hem and check and make sure that the legs are the same length. Now you'll notice that I always pin the right leg. Um, I never pin the right and sometimes the left or sometimes the right. I always pin the right leg and the reason I do that is because I know that if that the right leg is the correct length and therefore if I come across a pair of trousers where one leg is shorter or longer than the other I can make the adjustment. Place the jean genie with the amount the hem go is going up at the original length and place a chalk mark at the top of the genie at the second um, slot down and then at the third slot down and just keep doing that on each leg. Now you notice that I've placed three marks on one leg and I place three marks on the other. So the amount that's going up is four and a half inches or 11.5 centimeters and that's on the original length. Mark at the top, mark in the middle and mark down the bottom. And just to explain it there to show you and that's why I created the Jean Genie is with the slots at the top because a lot of people used to come in and say that they would mark the new length and then cut and then they the jeans would be too short because they hadn't allowed for the hem allowance and jeans are always folded twice you can actually just uh, fold over lock and turn but if you want a traditional jeans hem then it's two folds and I'm just going through and doing that marking that again on the other leg and you can see that it's just the same thing four and a half inches then mark at the top mark in the middle mark at the bottom and the bottom one is going to be a cut line So now the only thing to really remember here is to cut on the bottom line. But you'll also notice that what I do is I actually place a nick in the fabric on the bottom line and then I cut in what I call a circle. This means that the whole section at the bottom is kept in one piece and if there for any reason um, the piece is needed to be sewed back on, it can be. If you cut up to the line and then around, you have to then, if you did have to put it back on, you'd have to place a join. So it's just as easy to cut in a circle and save that piece, or you can hand it back to the person that it belongs to. Um, the other reason I do this is I have a lot of very tall customers who need false hems or extensions. Um, so I keep all my um, good pieces in a 55 litre plastic container so whenever I have a need I can actually go and see if I can find something that will match particularly when it comes to not necessarily jeans but when it comes to good quality um, dress pants Because this is um, how to sew a jeans hem on a domestic sewing machine, a lot of old domestic machines do not like the thick denim thread. So what I do, and because in my shops I used to have, use domestic sewing machines, um, we use two threads. Um, and you'll notice that in my hand I've actually got a car key and an orange because the thread has a slight khaki tinge to it so when you actually meld um, a khaki and an orange thread together you actually get um, the color you want. Now some jeans are actually more of a beigey color so you may find that you want to meld a, a beige with um, maybe a khaki and that will also give you another color so what you can do is just play around with your two threads until you actually get an accurate um, thread color for the jeans that you're shortening. 
I just would like to add here that it should be a good quality thread. Um, never use a, a, a cheap thread, it can damage your machine. Whenever I'm using two threads, I use a cone thread holder at the back because sometimes I use a 1000 or 5000 meter, meter roll. The second thread um, I'll just put onto the machine, but when I run them through the machine, the two threads are together all the way down to the needle. Now the needle needs to be a jeans needle and the size is a 90-14. Um, the Schmitz needle has a little blue mark on, on it so you can identify it easily. So you want to insert that needle in. I always put the needles that I'm not using onto my, um, I've got a little needle holder. When threading it, because the uh, 9014 actually has a large eye, it's a lot easier to um, thread with the two, the two threads. But I use tweezers, I just find it a little bit easier. If you just wet the tip and then place it, the two threads through, unless of course you've got an automatic um, threader. Now I use a my single buttonhole foot when I'm sewing jeans because I find that A, I can see what I'm doing with the clearness of it being all plastic, um, plus the underneath has little ridges. And the bobbin, it can either be a blue, the colour of the denim, or uh, an orangey colour similar to the, the um, colour that's on the jeans now. Fold the hem once at the first chalk mark and then a second time at the second chalk mark and place it under your sewing machine foot. I always start on the inside leg and I start in front of the inside leg seam. You'll notice that when you um, fold it over twice and lay it down flat onto the bottom of the machine that you can actually see the ridge where the hem is folded and I've got my sewing machine foot so that the edge of the left side of the foot is against the edge of the hem. Now when you come up to the thick um, outside seam there you just make sure that it check that it's folded under and I'm going to do that a few times just to show you and then when you get closer to it once you come up and actually touch the um, front of the foot against the seam, stop, lower the needle and raise the foot. Fold the jean genie so that the um, section with the opening in the middle can slide in underneath the foot. And now this is a very thick seam and I did, I used these jeans specifically because most people would get the hammer out, they'd hammer it or they'd iron it flat as hard as they could and probably mark the denim. There could be a number of um, ways that people would try and get around this. What I do is just use your nippers. If it's very, very thick, just use your nippers so that you can just get it underneath the sewing machine foot. I'm doing that a few times, you can see, because it's very, very thick. And now I'm just going across until I get to the middle of that seam and lower the needle and stop. Now the jean jean is just popped out the back that just shows how thick the seam was. Normally you'd have to maybe take it out. Now you want to actually fold it and put it in the front and sew up to um, the point where you can actually the foot is past the thick seam. Now it's just a matter of sewing around to the next seam. And now we go through the same process again. Always also make sure that the, um, the seams are actually in the right direction, like check it at the top and the bottom so that they're, sa they're in the same direction. So I've, I raised the foot, I had the needle down and 
I had the Jean Genie. Now this theme is not anywhere near as thick as the other one. So all the Jean Genie is doing is allowing the foot to actually glide across that thick seam without any trouble whatsoever. And there's no miss stitches, you know, which happens when you're going over a thick seam. Um, you know, you, you end up with a, a very, very wide stitch because it miss, missed sewing it. And you can see there, it's fine and it's fine on the inside. It's right on the very edge. You see that's right on the very edge and that's because I could actually see where that edge was as I was sewing. So it's once, twice, this is the second leg, and in front of the inside leg seam. Now it's just a matter of sewing around until we get to that thick seam and we're going to follow the same process again. So we lower the needle, place the Jean Genie in underneath. I'm sort of holding the fabric at the back as well while I'm wriggling the Jean Genie inside. Now it is important to lower the foot. A lot of people forget to lower the foot because the, the, the foot is sitting on top of the Jean Genie and they forget to lower the foot and then what happens is you'll end up with a mangled mess underneath. So you must lower the foot onto the Jean Genie. I'm bringing it into the middle of the seam and then I'm going to place the Jean Genie in the front. You can actually see the ridge there where the, the hem is folded under and that's, that's your guide for sewing right on the very edge. And then sewing around. Now of course if you want to you can pin, pin it first um, because I've just done so many I don't, don't bother with pins. But certainly, you know, when you're starting out and doing it for the first time, you should. Or you could be courageous and do it without and see how you go. So, it's not very difficult. Um, all it does is it allows you to sew jeans on your domestic sewing machine with your normal machine, two threads in the top, one in the bobbin underneath, a jean needle, a nice clear um, sewing machine foot so you can see what you're doing, you can see the ridge um, and you can actually see how you're sewing right on the very edge underneath. I hope you enjoyed the video and good luck with shortening your jeans. Happy sewing.